had a chance to review those questions, digest them, and what does he think of the line of questions? Uh, as with all questions of this nature, I would refer you to the president's uh, outside personal attorneys, Jay Sekulow and Rudy Giuliani. Hey, Sarah. Sarah. Can you tell us what the president's level of confidence is in Chief of Staff Kelly, and is he under serious consideration to be the next nominee for the Veterans Affairs Administration? Uh, no, he is not being considered as the VA secretary. Uh, both the president and the chief of staff are very happy with his position that he currently holds, which is chief of staff to the president at the White House. Uh, and I would refer you back to General Kelly's statement that he put out yesterday, uh, specific to the comments that uh, allegations about comments that he'd made. I spend more time with the president than anyone else, and we have an incredibly candid and strong relationship. He always knows where I stand, and he and I both know this story is total BS. I'm committed to the president, his agenda, and our country. This is another pathetic attempt to smear people close to President Trump and distract from the administration's many successes. Thank you about Iran, Sarah. You described it, or the NSC last night described it as a clerical error, but it was a significant editing error that has policy implications. Can you state from the podium what this White House believes is the current state of Iran's pursuit of a nuclear weapon, and if it's in full compliance with a joint comprehensive plan of action as the IAEA has said it is. We think the biggest mistake that was made was under the Obama administration by ever entering the deal in the first place. The typo that you referenced was noticed, immediately corrected, um, and we are focused on moving forward on the safety and security of our country. But you, astute, you assert what that says, that there is no current program in Iran and that it is in compliance with the deal, at least as it's negotiated. Correct? Well, the problem is that the deal was made on a completely false pretense. Uh, Iran lied on the front end. They were dishonest actors. And so the deal that was made was made on things that weren't accurate. Uh, and we have a big problem with that, uh, particularly Sure. Particularly the fact that Iran's nuclear capability were far more advanced and far further along than they ever indicated, which if this uh, nuclear deal maintains as it is right now when the sunset provision hits in seven years, they will be much further along in the process and much uh, and able to make a nuclear weapon much quicker uh, than they've ever indicated before. And that's a big problem. John. Thank you, Sarah. I wanted to ask you about the reprieve that uh, the EU, Canada, and Mexico are receiving this 30-day reprieve for uh, the tariffs on imported steel and aluminum. Uh, what is going to take place during this 30-day period, and what are the chances of that exemption uh, being made permanent for the EU, Canada, and Mexico? Uh, this, the, we are extending those uh, negotiations because we've seen some progress. Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of what that may look like, but we have 30 days to continue in those negotiations and hopeful that we can get something uh, that works for everybody. Wanted, if I may, I just wanted to ask you about something uh, that took place last week uh, involving uh, the president's personal attorney, Michael Cohen. He, in court documents, uh, asserted that he would um, assert his Fifth Amendment rights in the Stormy Daniels lawsuit, uh, which was filed against both him and the President. And you may recall that in September of 2017, the President at a campaign rally said, the mob takes the Fifth. And he also said, if you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? Do those ideas also apply to Michael Cohen? Does the President stand by those comments? I can't speak on behalf of Michael Cohen. I'd refer you to him. Francesca. Thank you, Sarah. On those list of 44 questions, the president said today that the leak was disgraceful, but a former assistant to special counsel Robert Mueller has suggested that the White House was behind the leak. Is he wrong? Uh, once again, I can't comment on anything regarding those questions, and I would refer you to the president's well, outside. That was a question counsel. about about specifically the White House and being involved in it. It was actually specific to the president, and that's why I'm referencing and referring you to the president's personal attorneys who can speak okay, on that well, matter. A question about the White House specifically, then, is the White House concerned, as Congressman Adam Schiff has said, that so many of the questions point to obstruction of justice? We uh, here at the White House try never to be concerned with anything dealing with Adam Schiff. Like, Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Let me point you back to what John had started on with the tariffs. Uh, Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary, had said today, said earlier today, quote, if we're going to impose it, we're going to have to do it pretty soon or else people will start gaming the system. 
Um, it sounds like you feel like this is moving along, but do you agree, does the White House agree with the Commerce Secretary that you're going to have to move forward on this pretty soon? And if so, what exactly is pretty soon? Uh, certainly, it's a 30-day extension, and we expect uh, for these negotiations to be completed at the end of those 30 days. So this is, will this be the last of the 30 days then? Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of the process, but right now we're working on uh, negotiating a deal during this 30-day time period, and we'll keep you posted if there's anything that changes. Yeah. Yeah. Clarify Dr. Lonnie Jackson's status. If he's no longer the president's personal physician, why not? Uh, he's still a um, active duty Navy doctor assigned to the White House, but upon his nomination to the uh, Veterans Affairs Department of Veterans Affairs as the secretary, uh, an acting doctor was put in his place, and uh, Dr. Connolly will remain there. Why is that, though? Why not bring him back in that role if the president was so happy? To Again, Dr. Connolly had already assumed that role, but uh, Dr. Jackson continues to be an active duty Navy doctor that's assigned here at the White House, where there are a number of doctors that are part of the White House medical unit. And does the president have any response to the defamation suit filed yesterday by Stormy Daniels? Uh, I don't have anything for you on that. Thanks, Two questions for you. Why did Keith Schiller, who was a White House employee at the time, go and take medical records from the president's personal doctor last year? Uh, as a standard operating procedure for a new president, the White House Medical Unit took possession of the president's medical records. It was characterized as a raid. Is that your understanding of what happened? The doctors seemed to be pretty upset about it. Uh, no, that is not my understanding. My second question, Sarah, just relates to the... Actually, this is your third question. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you. Um, the, you. You talked about, you made it very clear you don't want to get into this list of questions from the New York Times, which is fine, but the president has tweeted about it. Um, he's talked about how none of these questions relate to collusion, but that's not true. Over a dozen of them do. We've talked about accuracy from the president in the past. Why is he mischaracterizing these reports? Once again, I'm not going to get into the back and forth on matters involving the special counsel, and I would refer you. Involving the special counsel, that's the uh, It certainly has implications with the special counsel, and I'm not going to get into a back and forth on it. I refer you to the president's personal Sarah, attorney. Sarah, just to follow up on Hallie's first question, there are some today who are essentially saying that what has happened uh, with uh, the president's former personal doctor was a burglary. Uh, the way Keith Schiller uh, busted in and essentially... I don't know if some. I think there's one, but not some. Well, what's your response to that, uh, to that characterization? Uh, once again, that it would be a standard procedure for the president, a newly elected president's medical records, uh, to be in possession by the White House Medical Unit, and that was what was taking place as those records were being transferred over to the White House Medical Unit, oh, as requested. Oh, yeah, if I could ask a second question. There are some allies of the presidents up on Capitol Hill who are apparently drafting articles of impeachment for the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein. Is it the President's belief that Rod Rosenstein has either committed a high crime or a misdemeanor? Uh, I'm not aware of any belief of that. Yes, Does the White April? House then not endorse that, that drive? Would the White House call on these members not to pursue that? that? I, I, I haven't seen the specific document, but we don't have any personnel announcements and we're continuing to move forward with the Department of Justice. Um, Sarah, there are two questions. Um, there is uh, there are questions percolating about uh, James Shaw Jr. Um, and the president. The president um, has uh, has he called him? Is he planning on meeting with him? He's talking to heroes. He had the the heroes of the Southwest flight in the Oval Office today. You said something about James Shaw Jr. last week. But is the president himself going to reach out to him? Will he come? to the White House? Uh, my understanding is that there has been um, an outreach effort uh, to bring him here to the White House, and I'll keep you updated on that as I have more information. Okay, and second question. Payoffs, hush money, Russia trolls, Facebook, WikiLeaks, DNC had Comey email investigations on the eve of the election, allegations of collusion. Do these issues give support to those who say, uh, who offer questions about the president's legitimacy? Uh, I'm not sure I follow the question, but I think the fact that millions of Americans came out and voted for and continue to support this presidency makes him pretty legitimate. Steve. Sarah, the, the announcement yesterday, how is that affecting the president's thinking about what to do about the Iran nuclear deal? Uh, certainly the fact uh, that the deal was made under false pretenses is problematic, uh, but the president's been very clear that he thinks the deal is one of the worst that we've ever seen, um, and we'll keep you posted when he's made a final decision on that front. When did the president first hear about this? Was it in early March when he spoke to the <coughs> Prime Minister Netanyahu? 
Uh, I'm not aware of the exact date that the president was made aware, but uh, we were, the White House and the president were made aware prior to uh, Israel's announcement yesterday. Lastly, was this coordinated yesterday with the White House? Did, did Netanyahu say, give you a heads up and say this is coming? Yeah, this was something that the Israelis did. However, they did give us a heads up that it was going to take place prior to the announcement. So back Sorry. to the president's tweet this morning. He said there is no question on collusion, but when you look at these specific questions about outreach by the campaign to Russia, isn't, aren't these questions about collusion? Uh, once again, I'm not going to get into a back and forth about questions uh, leaked or anything having to do with the special counsel, and I would refer you to the president's attorney. And just one more. Does this list factor at all into whether or not the president will or will not speak with the special counsel? Uh, once again, I would refer you to the president's outside counsel. Yes, yeah. But in terms of that, though, the president has said before several times he would like to sit down with the special counsel. Um, where is he on that? Do you believe he has made up his mind on that? Uh, again, I would refer you to the president's uh, outside well, counsel to... at all, do you think? Uh, again, I'm not going to get into a back and forth uh, on any matters related to Let the Let me try a different counsel. topic if I can. <laughs> on the NSC, um, the NSC says it was a clerical error, but how does a mistake like this get made? And do you believe that the White House has a credibility problem around the world with its statements like this. Do you take this seriously? Uh, absolutely, which is why we immediately corrected it. But again, I think the biggest mistake is the fact that the United States ever entered into uh, the Iran deal in the first place. That, to me, seems to be the biggest mistake in this process, not a simple typo that was immediately corrected uh, and notified individuals as, as soon as we knew that it had happened. But the White House so never sent out a corrected statement. They put it on their website, but they have never sent out a corrected statement. We responded, why was that? We responded to every journalist inquiry that we received uh, that we're aware of or to the best that we could responded to each person that asked about that. Uh, Sarah, um, you, the president yesterday talked about holding his meeting with Kim Jong-un in the DMZ and he said um, there are some people that don't like the look of it. Um, has the location of this meeting and doing it in the DMZ been the subject of some debate internally and what qualms might some members of the staff have about holding the meeting? Uh, I'm not going to get into the deliberations on this at this point, but uh, the list has been narrowed, as the president said, and we expect to have an announcement on that soon. Can I ask one more follow-up sure. on Iran? You, you said twice now that the Iranian nuclear deal was made under false pretenses, but, you know, as, as is clear from the historical record, the U.S. and its partners made this deal with Iran precisely because they knew Iran wasn't truthful about its military nuclear program. So are you suggesting that back in 2014-15, we believed Iran? Uh, I'm suggesting that the deal never should have been made in the first place, and even the fact that they had been uh, known to be bad actors to some degree, uh, the degree to which they were not being honest was not fully known at the time the Iran deal was made, is our understanding. No. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, two questions. Uh, one is about the lawsuit uh, filed today by California and seven, 17 other states over uh, their right to uh, have the EPA uh, fuel standards in cars. Uh, they're fighting the administration on this. I wanted to know what your response was to the lawsuit and also the broader question that this administration seems to be on the other side of the traditional Republican argument on states' rights on a number of cases. Is there any apprehension internally about having such a heavy hand with the states? Um, certainly the administration supports state rights. Uh, in regards to the specific lawsuit, we're reviewing that and we'll let you know when we have a statement out. And the second question was about the NRA meeting uh, this week. There are a lot of Americans who say this is an insensitive time to be speaking to the NRA given the uh, epidemic of gun violence which the president himself has talked about. What's the administration's response to that? Why make the decision to speak at the NRA now? As the president has said before, a lot of presidents have not spoken before the NRA at their annual convention. Uh, certainly, as we have indicated on many occasions, uh, safety is a big priority. Security is a big priority for the administration. Uh, but we also support the Second Amendment and strongly support it and don't see there to be a problem with speaking at the National Rifle Association's meeting. Aisha. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned earlier, or you were asked about a VA secretary. Where, where does the White House stand in that? Uh, decision-making process. Are you guys talking to potential candidates now about that position? We are, and the president will be meeting with a number of individuals over the next couple of weeks, and we'll keep you guys posted as we get further in that process. John? Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. 
Uh, in his recent appearance on Fox and Friends, the president offered a vague criticism of the Electoral College and suggested reform was in order. Uh, several pundits after interpreted this as support for the controversial national popular vote plan in which states give their electoral votes to the winner of the popular vote nationally. Uh, is that what the president meant? Could you offer a more uh, perspicacious uh, definition of what he said in that uh, I don't have any policy announcements on that front or something that we're looking to do, uh, but certainly want to always look for the best way to preserve the integrity of our elections. Well, Olivia, I also, sorry. Yeah, was he aware that the Republican National Committee in May of 2011 had a resolution condemning that national popular vote plan. I'm not sure if he was aware, but I, I am pretty sure that the president uh, is more than happy at times to say what he thinks is right, whether or not that there was a statement made many years ago uh, contrary to that. Olivia. Thank you, Sarah. I've got a couple on foreign policy. Um, you mentioned the uh, Afghan attack. Um, when, president, when Senator Rand Paul came out and said he was going to support Mike Pompeo for Secretary of State, he said, that he was doing so because Mike Pompeo now agreed with the president that the time is now to withdraw from Afghanistan. Does the president agree with that characterization of his views? Uh, I don't have any uh, updated policy guidance on that front. We laid out our Afghanistan strategy um, just a few months ago, and there is no change to that policy at this point. And then on Iran, the, the question of what it means to withdraw from the Iran nuclear agreement has come up a couple times. Um, in the president's mind, does that mean immediately reimposing sanctions, doing what's called snapback, or is, does it mean something else? Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of anything the president may or may not do, and once he makes a final decision, he'll make that announcement. Uh, last question, Brian. Thank you very much, Sarah. When the president <laughs> spoke with uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Saturday, did uh, the Israeli trove of documents about Iran's nuclear program come up, and did the president encourage Israel to release those documents on Monday? Uh, I'm not sure beyond uh, the readout of the call, but I do know that we had discussions with uh, Israel about their rollout, and we were notified prior to uh, their announcement being made yesterday. Did the White House had us encourage Israel on the timing of the release? Uh, I'm not aware of specific coordination on the timing, but we certainly supported uh, their announcements and supported their efforts. Was there not desire by the White House to have Israel release these documents in order to influence the domestic debate here in the United States, in order to you know, paint the, the, uh, the deal in a, a different light? Uh, I think there was a desire to make sure people understood the truth and had all of the information that was out there. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. All right. So. Uh,